What's up YouTube? So in this video, I'm going to cover setting an auto-tune map on this GSXR 1000R. I'm going to show you the actual auto-tune map that I use. I'm going to go over the exhaust gas offset, where I set mine and how I came up with the numbers. I'm going to show you my target AFRs and I'm going to tell you why I set them there and what I'm thinking and the logic behind that. So I'm going to roll the intro and then I'm going to get to my computer and open up the Woolwich software and show you my actual auto-tune map. on my site MotorcycleTuningTips.com titled Air Fuel or How to Tune. It's in the category. Hold on. Well, I create an auto-tune map. Yeah, so it's on MotorcycleTuningTips.com and the article is Create an Auto-Tune Map where I talk more about this. Um, so I'm going to do a video as well because there's some things I didn't capture in there and <clears throat> I want to add so this is the auto-tune screen and I'm just going to go over my settings that I put here and why I don't capture anything below 10 rich or 17 high and I do that just because once it's above there it's no good anyway. Um, I, desel, I filter out desel and <clears throat> I set my minimum and my maximum at 17.1 as well. Uh, and I do that because I don't want to capture the 19 or full range of the uh, wide band that it's capturing. Uh, I limit it to 10% change. And so this is what I want to cover as well, too. It's like I keep the strength at 50% for the entire map. And my smoothing I keep high. And, but And this is something... I want to cover as well. It's like the IAP to TPS transition, and I set it at maximum. And the reason why I set this at 30% or maximum is that I want to try and tune with the map, staying on speed density for as high as possible. And I do that for blending. I do it so the blend between the TPS map and the IAP map or manifold pressure map, speed density to alpha N as smooth as possible and I've just had real good luck of throttle response with that higher I mean I, I don't know what default is but it may be around 10 or 15 percent I don't know if that's actually given but I've had really good luck keeping it at 30. All right so exhaust gas offset this is for my GSXR 1000R <clears throat> with the Yoshimura Alpha N or Alpha T system, full system, stainless steel. I actually measured these. This is what I got. So I took a tape measure and measured from the flange to the actual wideband or the O2 sensor. And I measured the header pipe. Um, I think that this is the OD, but it's real close. I mean... Exhaust gas offset is really what you're doing is you're telling the program how much time it takes for the pulse to, from the outlet of the header to get to the O2 center, O2 sensor, and what that does is it maps that reading to the cell that it falls into, so it offsets it. Now I'm going to tell you while this is important, it's not super critical. And the reason why it's not super critical is because if I'm in this, if I'm in a cell over here at 13.0 and the offset's wrong and it actually read it in the next cell down or the cell above it, the thing is if I was wide open throttle from like 4,000 up to like 14,000 RPM, these readings are interpolated. And not only are they interpolated, they're smooth as well. So... It helps to be accurate and it helps to be as precise as you can, but in most instances, it's not super critical. I mean, for a long time, I didn't even have this in there. I mean, I've just never seen the, 
I've never really seen the reason on the way these are tuned to have that type of precision, but I did actually finally put it in. Forced induction or where you have less resolution, this kind of measurement or precision is more important. But with the resolution that's already built into the factory map and the interpolation and smoothing, while it's important, it's not super critical. And I have the Woolwich default, so you can see that what it's zero to five volt, what it actually can read. And if we go back to my other screen, you will see that I do not read the full screen or the full range. I don't read the full range. Uh, once again, it's not important to be able to read seven, eight, nine AFR. All right, so this is my TPS map. I will show IAP as well, and I believe my actual TPS map is on my website, MotorcycleTuningTips.com. So this map is already on there, but I did, if you look over here, I richen it up now. And I'm going to tell you why I richen it up over here on the 100% column as RPMs go up. The reason why I do that, if you're on a long straight and you're holding sixth gear or fifth mainly once you put get in the fifth gear and you're holding it it takes a while for you to go or build rpms and at 13.0 while i think it's probably safe you're adding a lot of heat into the cylinder so what i do is once the rpms start climbing i like to richen it up and that way as the time at speed or time at these rpms build as more heat builds and the engine and the cooling system and everything's being taxed I will actually, I'm adding fuel at the high RPM to cool the cylinder down. So that's why you see this or why I chose to do that. All right, another thing that I do is like, this is idle, but TPS map is not really used at idle. But you have to blend. These maps have to blend. So while this may only be used like 0.5%, I don't know what percent it's used, but I know in order to blend a TPS map to an IAP map, that it is not purely IAP. It has to cross over somewhere so you don't get that step jump. And that brings up another point. It's like try to match your target AFR like here target AFR to the same position in the TPS now IAP is manifold manifold pressure which will change with engine load so just because I have this block chosen in the IAP map does not mean that the TPS map is the same it, it doesn't work that way I mean so I do it on ranges, like a map the ranges. So just going back, this is, all right, 28%, 3,200 RPM. There's a good chance I will never see this cell. So. It's 28% and somewhere around here, it's more likely. But just looking at it, what I've done here is like I start off my IAP, IAP map's the same way, map, but I have it 13.4 at idle. I like to keep idle around 13.4, and I do that because your AFR or your pulse width is going to be influenced by your air temperature and your engine temperature. And both those are multipliers to the base. So what I found in the past is if you try to lean this out and get around 14.0, 14.6 at idle, when those come into play, you either go rich or you go lean, especially with no O2 feedback. So I said around 13.4, let the multipliers come into play. I hardly ever drop below 12.0 on cold start, and I hardly go above 14.1, 14.2 while cruising or on hot so it works really well and most of my cruise rpms you see in the middle i lean it out to 13.8 the same thing it's the same idea as act or air charge and engine coolant change 
I don't fluctuate much out of this AFR. I'm going to keep it pretty close to this. Now, what we do see as the throttle starts to increase, I am blending it down to 13.0, the 12.8. And that's because if I made this 13.8 and then just said, oh, 66, this, I want it to be 13.0, that step change, will it won't blend well. The, the interpolation, it will have a hard time ever doing that. So what you'll feel is that's when... That's when you'll feel that hiccup or you'll feel the sputter or you'll feel something like it'll lay flat there. And the reason why that's happening is because the interpolation or the change in fuel demand with very little change in air demand between the two cells, you get a hiccup, you feel it. So that's why you, it's important to blend these in. Don't step change them. Let's see, what else do I have here? Yeah, so on this map, let me just show you this real quick because it does not, the ECU, because it's alpha N and it does transfer over to the TPS map at some percent of throttle, you can still program this map if it was speed density or think of it as speed density. And you'll see that here, that I've done the same thing, because as this gets, as manifold pressure gets closer to zero, that means as you move across the top, it's the same thing as TPS. In order to get zero manifold pressure in or difference, you pretty much will have to be at wide open throttle or damn near, you have to be dang near, uh, just the delta P across your throttle body will be the difference. But if you think of this, these maps up here as TPS, set these AFRs as if there is no TPS map. And it, I mean, it makes for a smooth running bike. Uh, just be close. I mean, you don't have to match identical because, like I said, manifold pressure, your IAP will definitely change for, for engine load. The fueling is going to change. I mean, so get close match this table as close as you can to the TPS and um, your bike will run smooth. Um, so anyway, I'm going to quit this. If you have comments or questions, just leave them below and ask and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, if you go to my website, read my about page. I'm just telling you, I mean, this is not, I, I have a lot of experience in control systems, not necessarily this, particular control scheme but this is not rocket science to me so anyway if you uh, want more of this please like subscribe give me a thumbs up leave a comment let me know what you want to know or even if you disagree put it down there I mean I'm open to it I'll read it discuss it and see if uh, maybe I'm wrong maybe there's something I didn't think of so anyway I will talk to you later and see you